Okay, I'm pretty sure you guys have all seen the last episode where I checked out all of these programs I made about six or seven years ago. Now it's time to check out a bunch of other different programs I made six or seven years ago. I really, I used to love just going around, coming up with an idea for a program and just making it. That was what I liked to do back then. Anyway, that was the first collection of apps. I'm going to make a collection of these too. I found these like scattered through old debug folders and stuff on my computer. Anyway, let's start checking them out now. I could talk on for ages. So let's start off with something not very impressive. Colours execute. So here you can just see some colours. We've got red, which is RGB 255 because it's fully red, and it's got zero green and zero uh, blue. Um, and this is 255 blue over here, so you can see these colours. Anyway, what we are going to do is we are going to mix these colours. So if I click on a colour, I've got red, and I click on blue, the third box I click, so I've said I want to mix red and blue together, I click on it and it mixes them together. Now this program was a complete failure. I thought it was going to work well, but it did not work well at all. I, I actually remember making this being so excited, but it failed. So the idea is it looks at the numbers at the bottom here. So it goes, okay, 255, five, and then it just kind of averages them. So the average of all these numbers makes this, and then thus it makes what the colours would mix together to become. And I just thought, oh, that would be cool. I could make a program that you can mix a bunch of colours and just make really cool stuff. But it didn't end up working. What happens when you mix? blue and yellow together. It should be green, right? Well, it won't make green. Watch this. Blue and yellow does not make grey. It makes grey for some reason. So what's happened here is it's gone, okay, so 255, zero. The average of those numbers together is 128. Um, zero, 255, 128, 255 and zero, the average is 128. And we all know that any numbers where it's like all the same number, where it's like 111 or 100, 100, 100, that's a shade between white and black. So my idea only really worked for the red and blue colours, mixing them together. Now the program gets worse because it's actually not very good at all. You can try and mix things together and it just won't work. Let's try this out. Purple and grey and it made a lighter shade of purple. Okay, well that kind of worked. But often this program will just crash. Let's... There we go. Overflow issues. So obviously that's when I gave up on that program. It never did what I wanted, which was to actually show what would happen if you mix two different paints together and calculate it by itself and it just crashes when you get certain numbers mixed together and it can't figure out how to average them. For some reason it crashes. So yeah, I when did I make that? I was so disappointed. I was so excited. Okay, Jan 11th, 2011. Always look at the modified date because that's the date I actually made it at 9pm. <laughs> okay, so that was that. Disappointing. Let's check out Picture Generator. This is like something I spent 20 minutes on. You press start and it just does that. So I don't know why I called that a picture. It's an interesting looking screensaver possibly if you make it like full screen and you're like, oh, check this out. But yeah, it's really not really that exciting. Stop. Start. It's boring. Okay, so that is two boring programs. Let's check out Dark OS Studio. So this was supposed to be the successor. Company Web Links. Right, that's when I had a website I was making called Weblinks, but I discontinued that ages ago. How did I make the website? I used another one of my programs, HTML Live, to make the website. So let's just go on to this. So this is Dark OS Studio, which was supposed to be the successor to Histocom, but then it never really went anywhere, and then I just made Shift OS instead. Let's check this out. I love this inter for some reason. Okay, the Dark OS thing up there in the corner, it's not fantastic, but, you know, it's better than nothing. Um, I love the sound effects and, like, the way you put something over this. I just, I liked the black and green. Like, I just had this thing back then with black and green, old computers, black and green, and that's why I made this, because I wanted to make... See that Darknet? I had no idea about the Darknet and the Deep Web back then, and I just called it Dark Web or Darknet because of the theme of this, you know, operating system. I love the sound effects. That is cool. Um, I didn't make a sound effect for that. Now, anyway, let's open up Blackpad. See, everything's just got a name referring to Dark, because this is like Dark OS. So let's open up Blackpad. Um, so you put your notes here. Now, Look, listen to this. <laughs> Isn't that a cool sound effect? I'm, I actually remember I made that with my mouth. I was like, 
like with my mouth, and that's. <laughs> and the idea is, it's almost like you're clicking on it, and it sucks it up, so the mouse is holding it. Then you let go of it. That's what it was supposed to sound like. Then you can put your notes here. Hello, this is a random note on a game that never made it. I can so see somebody taking the skin from this game and putting it in Shift OS. Like, it's gonna happen. Trust me. Someone's gonna do it. Anyway, we're gonna go on the dark net now, which is just the normal internet. It would be so cool here if I actually gave this a style, but I never really did give it a style anyway. Dog. Like, it works. The internet works. Now, the cool thing about this, see this green bar at the bottom? While the web page is loading, it turns red saying the web page is still loading and the moment it finishes loading the entire website, every image and everything, it turns green. See that? So that was a cool thing about that. Anyway, I love how these programs close. Watch this. Isn't that such a cool closing feature? And that's so easy to do. You could add that to Shift OS if you wanted to. Shift OS is open source now, so feel free to take ideas from Dark OS. I did create this, into, I knew I created it in 2010. It must have just been, I must have added some feature to it or something in 2012. But yeah, I remember this. I did make this around the same time as I made Histocom, possibly because I thought Histocom, I would get some copyright thing by Microsoft. So I was trying to make, you know, my own interface for Histocom. Oh, that is so cool. Look at that, it goes red. That is so cool, I love it. Okay, let's close this off and shut down. <laughs> I love the sound effects. Okay, that was Dark OS. Now that we've checked out an interesting application, let's check out like the worst one here. Digging. This is one I love digging games like Motherload Unlimited and stuff. Look at this, we're digging. So we're gonna dig this way. We're gonna dig into the earth a little bit. Gonna do some diagonal digging, which looks absolutely awful, and some diagonal digging this way. Now we're gonna dig further. Um, there's no minerals to collect. Um, we're gonna go back now and we're gonna fly up and try and get out of this town. Yeah, see, it was completely lame, this. Like, don't even open that. That was me just testing out a movement program of how I would make a digging game, but it really just was awful. Not even worth looking at. So that's digging. <laughs> now this, file viewer. You're looking at this and you're thinking, I recognise that. Oh, it's first time. What is this? Explorer.execute. And then you realise, oh yeah, this is from... The OS first time a blue screen prank. Now, I actually made it in 2011, but there was some modification I made to it in 2014. But basically, what this is, is if you've seen OS First Timer and you've seen the blue screen prank in the Windows Me episode, this is actually the full program that I had actually made back in 2011 to trick one of my friends. So the idea is you open it up. Now this Blue screen is what happens when you do something within this. I just got rid of this whole file viewer interface when I uploaded this as an OS first time a prank. Now basically you can see the files on your computer. So you can go, oh, let's see. Um, you can go, oh, you know what? We don't need um, this public folder. Let's delete that. And as you can see, that public folder has been deleted, right? So go back into users, it is gone. This program, you can delete folders. Let's delete the whole of Philip. We don't need Philip and desktop.ini, do we? We don't need all users. Like these are pretty, oops. These are pretty important things and you shouldn't go deleting them. I mean, action screen recorder, what I'm using to the screen right now. We don't need that. Let's just delete it. Um, so you can trick your friends and it shows everything on your computer and you go, oh yeah, I don't need NVIDIA stuff and oh, shift OS, that can shift off. Um, sandbox, go away. Uh, you know, program files. Who needs program files? <laughs> so you just, you can go around pretending you're deleting things, right? But you're not. You're not deleting anything. It's just a big scam. Then, this is where it gets really funny. Oh, System32. Do you like all my icons I made? They are just so random. <laughs> I don't know why I made all these weird icons. I designed them really weirdly. Anyway, we can go, oh, look at this, System32. I don't need that. Delete. Um, and anyway, the idea is eventually at the end of this prank, you delete the Windows folder, right? And then you get the blue screen of death. And that's where the prank from OS First Timer picks up. So that's what that was supposed to be. So that was just a trick I played on a friend. Then you type and nothing works. And then system reboot in 10 seconds. 
So that's what that was. That's from that. That's a really fun p- prank to play on your friends. I did this on um one of my friends' computers at school on their laptop. And I deleted all their assignments. Um, cannot find boot device. Yep. And you press something and it just it stuffs up. Press any key. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. And then we're about to hear a scream. I've block your ears. <laughs> And my friend almost broke his neck when he saw that. Be careful not to do that in a spot where your friend could possibly fall backwards and die. Um, so that is that. File viewer, it's such a fun prank to play on friends. Go around deleting all their files and it deletes nothing. It only deletes it in its memory. So, you know, if I delete some apps in this folder, it can remember that I've deleted it, but only it remembers that you've deleted them um, and they're not really deleted. Anyway, let's check out some boring app now because that was a pretty pretty fun one. Dropper.execute. Dropper 0.1. What is this? Okay. So here's a ball. And when the ball is kind of over the hole, you click. Oh, wait. Press spacebar. Yeah, that's it. Press spacebar. Then you're on level two. And it goes a bit faster. Now, as you can see, these graphics are so hopeless. Look at my grass. That's what you get for trying to design grass from scratch. And then a hole. Yeah, I was not a graphics designer. And look at this ball. It's not even looking like that great of a ball, but like the graphics level three and it goes on forever. There's no end to this game. Um, every time you do it, it just gets faster. Let me actually, I want to try this out. Let's see what level I can get up to here. Level five. Yes. What level? I don't know why this is so addictive. You guys have to beat me in this. Level eight. Yes. Level nine. It's good. You can actually bounce against the walls. I didn't know you could bounce against them. Yes. Level 10. Now, as you can see, it's starting to get a bit glitchy now because it's getting so fast that the software is having trouble drawing the ball properly. Ugh. Level 12. <laughs> yes, level 13. Only just there. And I stuffed it. I actually got bored of that, so I kind of purposely died. Okay, so that was Dropper. What else do we have? Theme test, I'm not actually going to do. I wrote this back in the days of Windows 7, so you're supposed to use this on Windows 7. So, for your computer, user files, network, bin full and bin empty icon, you can actually change these icons. You go to browse, and then you choose an ICO file, an icon file, and you can change the icons on your computer, so you can literally change what the recycle bin looks like and stuff. Don't do that unless you've got Windows 7. Um, and I don't know how you change it back. So be careful if you use that program. Pro probably best you don't actually use that program at all. Photo. Here we go. Let's open a thingy here. And I'm just, I can scroll like this, but I'd rather just have it big enough so we can see it like this. Fantastic. So I've opened the Windows XP background. That's why I've got these icons here because I'm using them as examples for these programs. Um, this is kind of, you just can test out different effects. So this is normal. This is with colors inverted. Um, this is with RGB black. The only issue with photo, oh, and you can click that to get a different image, is it doesn't support many actual file types. So I think it only supports like JPEG files and that's about it. And you can just see different effects and stuff. It actually is not really that much of an exciting thing, this program. But it was just interesting. I was testing out, like, you know, modifying colours and um, bitmap files and just trying to do that. And, yeah, I didn't really get... I got a bit bored of it over time. But those were the effects I made. Okay, let's go into something a little bit insane now. Now, I don't know why I call this Kebonet. I'm pretty sure I was trying to do something like Chemistry Connect, but this program is actually to do with biology. So it should have been Bionect or something rather than Kebonect. Anyway, this was when I came up with this insane idea of a game that nobody would be able to beat. Here we've got in our inventory a human male. Let's put the human male on the examination table. <laughs> so the human male is an organism. There was only a very short time period when I was actually interested in biology. So this was like my biology interest coming out of me. So a human male is an organism. Now an organism is made up of systems. A system is made up of organs. An organ is made up of tissues. Tissues are made up of cells. Cells are made up of organelles. Organelles are made up of molecules and molecules are made 
made up of atoms. So the idea of this game is I'm actually starting it from the reverse, but you're supposed to start off with a bunch of atoms, join the atoms together, and you've got to know which atoms, you know, combine to make mole certain molecules, and you've got to try and get all the atoms you need to make all the molecules you need all the way to go up to make a human or a dog or some creature in this world. It's like the most impossible game ever. Nobody would be able to beat it. Anyway, so I'm starting from as if the game is already completed and you can see we've got our human male here. Now this is the join and this is the break. So break breaks them all apart like that and there you can see all the systems so a human male has uh as you can see this is a system now because we've broken the organism human male up into its systems which has like the i can't even pronounce these <laughs> digestive system muscular system skeletal system respiratory reproductive system nervous system all that stuff these are systems and you can join them together see it goes green when you've got things that you can join together anyway let's <laughs> That is the funniest sound, sucking up like a human. It's like, <laughs> all the systems combine. Anyway, let's break, oh wait, break the human up. Now we're going to take all this stuff, all these systems, and we're going to put the systems into our inventory. Okay, so what you do now is, um, well, this isn't what you do because you do it from the reverse, but let me just show you how insane this is. So skeletal system is a system. We're going to break this now into its organs that it's made up of. So you can see the skeletal system is made up of bones, and these are organs now. Bones, cartilage, ligaments, and tendons. Um, let's see some other system. Uh, we'll, we'll put these away now, these organs. Goodbye, organs. Um, let's get this one. Break it apart. This is made up of the heart, blood vessels, and all that stuff. Digestive system. Break, and it's saliva, stomach and all those other things there. So that is what this program is. Now, can you just imagine, like already, let's say you, you're given this, do you think you would be able to join, let's say these leftover things, like the salivary games and stuff, do you think with all these things you've got here, you'd be able to join them together to make the systems that I just broke apart and then eventually make, and I mean, we're only in organs, like let's, let's add some more things here. Let's really get this even more confusing. I'll open that up so you can see some more. Let's pop some things here, break them apart. What I should have made is a button that pushes everything. I think I ended up doing it, but this is an older version of the program. Um, now already, what was this? <laughs> That's a weird system. Whoa, I don't even know what all these things are. Okay, so can you imagine now? Oh, there we go. You can do that and then do it. Oh, that is much better. Could you imagine now trying to join things from the infantry to try and make these systems now? That would just be impossible. Okay, the last one, the nervous system with the brain and the spinal cord and all that stuff. All of it goes in here into our inventory. Now, do you seriously think you would be able to join these organs up to write, make the right systems? Like, sure, this is a great game if you're trying to learn about biology and stuff. But that's seriously impossible. And imagine these organs then being broken up into tissues and cells. Imagine taking that a step further and going tissue cells. And imagine starting with atoms, a bunch of atoms. Oh, join these atoms together to form every single part of a human then make the human. Like, this, it was too out there. So Chebonect was like... To, uh, it was one of those programs where the idea was just too big to turn it into an actual thing. So, Kebonect, goodbye. That's not ever going to become anything big. Board Game Maker is one of the big things, so I want to save that till the end. Um, File Wars. Oh my gosh, this is the weirdest game ever. Okay, so we are on level one right now, and it's called the TXT file. So we're on a computer, and we've found a TXT file. Its size is 20 bytes. Our gun strength is one byte. We have zero money. So we're going to start killing it. See, we're, we're shooting this file now, literally. Shooting a file and getting rid of it, all its bytes. See, it's only got six bytes left. Let's destroy this file. Congratulations, computer log found. After analyzing the text file, you have discovered the areas of the computer that all the user's files are stored on. Unfortunately, basic antivirus software is enabled, so you need to destroy it before destroying all the other computer files. Let's go to the shop and upgrade gun strength. So we've currently got one byte per shot. We can upgrade it again. Now we've got three bytes per, you know, shoot of the gun. Okay, dot bat is a virus, so let's get rid of help. See this? Now it's destroying with three different things. I don't really 
understand what this game was even supposed to be, though. It's really weird. Basic antivirus destroyed. It appears there are lots of antivirus programs installed on the computer. You don't install lots on a computer. They'll collide with each other. And also other types of software which are going to prevent you from completely destroying... You spelled destroying wrong the computer. You need to work out how each piece of software works before you can successfully destroy everything. Let's go to the shop again. Upgrade this gun. You should have added some other upgrades to this shop. Continue, but unfortunately I didn't make any more of that game. It was just a little bit too lame. <laughs> okay, so that was that game. I had it ideas, big plans for that, but then I just lost interest soon after making it. HTML Live. We will do this. So this was a program when I was at school learning about HTML and stuff. I wanted to do it live because I hated what we did in school is we literally got to open, um, you know, a notepad file and we'll like just trying to write stuff um, like, you know, welcome to my website. And we were writing stuff and new paragraph. This is a uh, new and like it, and what you had to do is save it then save it as a html file then view it and i didn't want to do that i wanted to co like do my html skills live that's why it's called html live so you can actually do stuff live let's just get our html structure set up and in the body here we're going to type in welcome to my website so you can actually see on the left this is an actual website and it's almost compiling your html website to show you as you're typing the code you're seeing the website being coded live and that was the idea of html live um unfortunately this is so outdated now and it won't really work with you know modern commands and stuff but that's what i was trying to make back then and it was really cool and for example because it's this code i can't just go down to the next line and it'll write on the next line no this is code this is HTML, you've got to use the commands. So if you want a new line, you've actually got to do P, the paragraph thing, and say, this is a new paragraph. Um, and then uh, what you can do is you can do stuff like highlight this welcome to the website. And instead of re remembering the command, you can go, okay, text, I want this to be bold. Oh, it's bold now. Let's highlight this. I actually want it to be bigger. So HTML text. Let's make this a heading, a heading to welcome to my website. Um, this is a new paragraph. Let's have that underlined. Um, there we go, underline, stuff like that. So you could actually make a website, you could do images, you can do everything. JavaScript was here, but Java these days is so blocked off, I don't think it would even work in this program. Um, and I started doing CCS and PHP into it, but that really went nowhere. I wouldn't even use those. But yeah, you can start making tables and inserting rows and items and do lists. It was pretty cool, actually. For a bit of fun, let's go on the web now. Okay, I've copied some code, and let's say you plop this code into the table. There we go. See how you've, I've made a table now, but that's via this code here. So you can literally code and change things live. Um, hello. See, so it's HTML live. That's what it's all about, doing stuff live. As another example, let's copy this website here. We've got twoplayergames.org. I don't know about this website. I just went to a random site. Um, I saved it on the desktop because this site actually works with my program. Not everything works. You go to view page source. This is the code. We're going to copy this code straight into HTML Live. And we'll make this full screen. There we go. You've got this website within HTML Live and you can edit it live on the spot. Um, so yeah, that's what HTML Live was. It was really meant for you to just practice coding. Look at HTML tutorials and then you can code it live and instead of saving it all the time, you can just type and watch your website be made as you type it rather than saving it, then opening it with a web browser. I just found that frustrating. Um, so that that was a cool program. Um, anyway, what else do we have? Let's go for another lame program. Interactive Infinite Road 0. 0.2, the most boring thing ever, and look at this, that image isn't even transparent. Let's drive our car, I'm pressing forward on the keyboard now. Um, you can't go side to side, you just drive forward. We're going 120 kilometers an hour, um, 60 miles an hour is 100 kilometers an hour. Um, we're going 200, and look at this! This program is so messed up. As I'm going faster, the road is literally getting messed up. And if I take my finger off the accelerator, which is the forward arrow key, 
the speed slowly decreases because the car's rolling. Um, then I go forward again, and yeah, that just is a lame program that doesn't even deserve to be here, but I put it there anyway. Okay, what else do we have? Philips Mario game. This is another lame one. Um, I was trying to make a Mario game. <laughs> I can't believe how lame this is. Yeah, it doesn't go anywhere. Apart from this, you just go around, walk around, jumping with the arrow keys. And it's the lamest Mario game ever. <laughs> okay, um, let's look at something a little bit more interesting now. Paper Math 2D. So this is version 0.6. We're going to make a straight line. Starting point X50. We're going to make location Y 150. 200. So, draw. So you type something, so it's gone, it's found location um, 150, so 150 pixels down and 50 pixels in. Um, as an example, if I go this now, that takes us to, I think about here, if I draw another point, you can see it's done that. So that's all that is, you can draw different lines and stuff like that. There we go. Um, arc, and you draw arcs, oh and by the way you can have preview points. So you can even place, oh, I want the red point there and blue there, and it automatically does it for you, which is a bit better. Uh, I don't know why this is called paper math. Probably because I was experimenting with something like math, trying to, you know, do points and generate images and stuff like that. There we go. We made our little arc. Degree size, 300. Yeah, there we go. We almost made a full circle there. Um, rectangles. So let's say... Oh, and options here. Oh, I see. You can do drawing colour and then the fill colour. So, like, green and stuff like that. Oh, and there's full screen, windowed mode, colour palette. Oh, okay. So there was a few more options here. Um, let's say 100 and 150 and make it a filled rectangle. And actually, we might put this over 400 so it's not, you know, in the way. Draw... Ah, okay. It wasn't working before because 400 was down there and that's where it was drawing stuff. 200. Anyway, that's just a fun little math paper thing you can do if you're bored. Well, let's make it a filled rectangle now. Um, and I want it to be filled. Wait a sec. Um, let's say X location 200 and go. Yes, there we go. So that's that. Um, you've got ovals. Now extras. This was where the fun was really meant to start. So this is point to mouse. So you choose a point, let's say point, four, what have we got, 400, 400, okay, now check this out, um, interval, I'm going to make that 25, start, and if I draw now, it draws a bunch of lines and you can kind of go, whoosh, 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 whoosh. isn't that cool, um, <laughs> that is so cool, I'm um, drawing colour, let's make a blue one, um, and we're going to put this at 700, Isn't that cool? See, that is... yeah. So it was going to be... it was going to have a bunch of different drawing things that you could do, but that's really all I made to start off with. Um, let's put this at 700 now. Um, and make red. See, there we go. Someone's going to make a desktop background out of this. I can see it. Um, and two points. I think this is exactly what it is. Oh, wow. That is weird. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Well, that's that program. That is paper math. Um, let me just see. Can I make the background black? Wow. Well, there we go. That is paper math. Have fun with that. You could probably do some cool stuff with that. Um, what have we got left to check out? We've checked out everything at the bottom. Draw. Oh, I don't know what this one is. Draw. Oh, really? Oh, this is another thing I was testing out. Okay, that is not very exciting. Just makes a funny little animation. It's drawing random. The closer you get to the bottom, the higher the chance of a random yellow spot being made in the map, and the higher you get to the top, the higher the chance of a red spot. So that was not actually very exciting at all. Do not click save image or make... Actually, do not click make movie. It will make like a million JPEG files on your computer. Do not do it. Um, so that is that. Okay, we're going to do it. We're going to do board game maker here. I can't hold this one back. This is the... I think the best application out of these ones. So as you can see, it's Blue's turn. Blue is going to roll the dice. Blue got a one, so it moved one space. Okay, it's Red's turn now. Red. Five, one, two, three, four, five, and it automatically moves that space. So you can verse, you know, you and a friend can do this. 
and play. Um, now you can add more players to this, say, and you can give them names too. So you can say um, Astral Phaser, OSFT Vlogs. Let's give them all names of my channels. YouTube Millionaire. Wait a sec. Yeah, you can't really give them big names. <laughs> um, players, wait, playing, um, and this can be, let's explore. Okay, so we've got a few players here. There you go. They don't all fit. You've got to give them short names, otherwise it doesn't work. Let's do new game. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make all of the players computer AI players. Now watch this. This is cool. Computer's <coughs> turn. And the computer is just going to play a game with itself. Is that not cool? That is awesome. So the player, <laughs> the computer is playing its own board game and look at this. Speed settings, let's make the AI wait time 200 and the counter move time 100. Okay. There you go. It's sped up. Is that not cool? Wow. That dice, I drew all those like little images myself and I actually rolled a real dice to get this going. You can go and make bets here and say, oh, who's going to get to the end first? Anyway, new game. Ah, no, stop, stop, players. Um, I want you all to be humans now. Okay. New. Okay, now the other cool thing here. Now, this is not just a board game where you just, that would be boring. That, that I would get bored if I played it, if it was just like this. We just get to the end and there's nothing here. You can do something really cool. Go here to edit and type backslash forward space. Now I can say on space five, I want the player to go forwards. Um, let's say 15, oh, that's a lot of spaces forward. 16, uh, 15 spaces forward when they land on space six add. And as you can see on six, it says go forward 15 spaces. And you're thinking, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. You can make your own board and it actually, and it actually will. Let's try and get someone to land on this. Oh, there we go. Someone landed on it and they went forward 50 and it turned green while they're going forward those spaces. Anyway, that is that. You can also randomize and look, it just adds a bunch of random things onto the board. So is that not cool? And that person went forward eight spaces. So that's pretty cool. You can make your own random board game. It's not done yet. That's not all you can do. So you can also set a space message. So let's say space 18, okay, 18, and it says go backwards five spaces. Um, you can actually write a message. Go back, you loser, and apply. Yeah, and it will actually make that, and it'll still do the fifth go back, you know, 15 spaces or whatever it said. But you can make it a custom message instead of just the default go backwards or go forwards. So you can make it say whatever you like. Now this still, it still gets even cooler. I'm not actually done yet. You can set the amount of board spaces. So let's say you only wanted there to, you didn't want it to be too long, so you just wanted 60 spaces in the game. You can also move them around. So if you don't want them in the position they're in, you can move them to create your own board shape. So maybe you want like a snaky board game. I don't know what you want. Oops, that goes here. And they will, don't worry, the counters automatically follow the right space to go. Oh, I've messed this up, haven't I? Okay, well, I've obviously s super messed up. Let's just watch how this goes. Blue is rolling and see how blue is going along. So they, the counters actually do follow exactly where you're going. So that's pretty cool. Um, they follow like the right number. So they'll move from 44 to 45 to 46. So they go on the right spots. So you can design your own board game here. And not only that, there's more. <laughs> you can change the colors. So let's open the color picker here and make this um, the board. The background of this board can be kind of a, let's give it a, a sickly gold color. Um, I'm going to apply that. So the background is now a sickly gold color. Now the spaces, let's make them, uh, okay, let's make them this bluish color and apply. Oh wait, all, not just one space. You can make them all different colors if you want. There we go. They're all blue. Or if you want, you can make some spaces instead of all, I can type in space 15 or something like that and make this one, this color apply. See that? And you can make, you know, a rainbow board, whatever you want. You can make these, you know, go back five spaces or whatever, with certain colours if you want to make them, certain colours. It's up to you. So there's that. 
You can also clear the board to get rid of all the messages. Now here you've got space, location and size. You can set the location and the size of the actual number. So let's say um, space 50. Um, we want the width, let's make it a little bit longer this way, to be 90 pixels. The location has to be set to 100. Um, oh, this is going to be silly. 100. Okay, set. And so it's moved that there. You can actually left click and move these spaces around. Um, and if you want to change the size of them, you middle click and you can, you know, change the size of certain spaces on the board. So that's another cool thing you can do. Now, um, here's something you can save your board and send it to your friends. Here's something I made earlier. Example game one. And as you can see, this is based on frogs on a lily pad. So hop forward five spaces and there's supposed to be lily pads, but they don't really look like it. But this is just showing you a different board design. Um, one, one. Oh, and it saves the speeds and stuff that you set. There we go. So, eat a fly, go hypo, and mega jump forward six spaces. So you can write your own things here, which is pretty cool. And anyway, you make your own board games. And if you want, if you think, oh, this isn't big enough, you can actually stretch it out and, you know, make your board game bigger if you want to make it bigger and have more spaces and stuff like that. So that can be a pretty fun program if you want to share that with your friends. So definitely check that out. Yeah, that is the Board Game Maker. So I think that's one of the best programs in here. And now we're going to go to another lame one. Average Art. Now, why, oh why did I use a pink? Maybe because I just never use pink in colour themes and stuff. I chose to make this program pink. Let's just have a look. So how many numbers do you want to average? I want to find the average of five numbers. I'm going to find the average of 15, 22, 3, 8, and 1. The average of 15, 22, 3, 8, and 1 is 9.8. You could have just used a calculator for that, but I was too silly to use a calculator. So that is just like a really lame program. <laughs> Don't even <laughs> touch that one. Um, over here you've got ArtPad. This is ArtPad, yes, from ShiftOS. So, 50... No, how, how big do we want this? Maybe 500, 500. And that is 250,000 pixels. Here is our little drawing board. And why did I... Oh, that is annoying, I did it like that. Okay. And we can now paint with a size 15 brush um, and a circle. And yes, I'm painting. So yeah, this is just for people who like Shift OS and want to have the... Let's have a fill color. And now I'm drawing boxes. So this is just, yes, yeah, straight out of Shift OS. This is actually a little bit addictive. But yeah, that's ArtPad from ShiftOS. If you've ever played ShiftOS before, this is the Windows version of it, if you want to have the Windows version of it. So yeah, that is that. Oh, I don't know. I, you can add extra colours here. I don't know how you add extra colours, but you can somehow. Okay, we'll quit that now. And I think we've seen just about everything. So yeah, that brings us to the end of this episode of my old applications. Unfortunately, I can't seem to find any more of the old applications I coded back in the day, but if I do find some more of these applications on some scrap of a hard drive anywhere, I will let you guys check them out. So have fun with these applications and you can find the download link to these in the description of this video. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.